Hey guys, welcome back to Willpower Garage. Today I've got a 2006 Audi A4 and we're going to replace the rear timing chain and tensioner on this 2 liter FSI motor. This Audi is making a little bit of noise when you start it up from a cold start. You can hear a chain rattling around in there. Generally when you have that noise, the tensioner in the back Either the guides are going bad or the tensioner itself is not holding pressure. Um, so we're going to go through the steps of removing that rear cover to gain access to that chain. Um, to even get to the cover, the high pressure fuel pump needs to come out, the vacuum pump that's back there needs to come off. Uh, it's not a terrible job, but there is a few items that are in the way, not to mention it's very close to the firewall, so it's a little tricky to get that. In order to replace the chain and tensioner here, you can see there's quite a few things that need to come off. Um, basically, take off whatever you think is in your way, is going to cause you trouble. I can tell you from experience, it's a lot easier and faster to take the time to remove something than to try to fight and work around it. Um, so, just a quick rundown. Uh, obviously, I'm going to remove the coils and the harness there all the electrical connections that are back here. We have to remove the high pressure fuel pump, uh, which is relatively easy to get off. There are some tricky things. Uh, it's held on with three bolts, but you need to remove the uh, pressure Schrader valve there. And then there's two lines underneath. I know it's really hard to see in the camera. One of them is a triple square banjo bolt. And I can tell you it's very tricky to get to, but what I do is Remove the coolant bottle and then usually with like a six inch extension, maybe six inch plus three, uh, depending on the size of your triple square sockets, mine are, mine are short stubby ones. You could snake it from under here up and get to that banjo bolt to remove that banjo bolt. The other one is a 17 millimeter like flare nut that you have to take out. Uh, both of those have to come out before you remove the three bolts for the high pressure fuel pump and then you can take the high pressure fuel pump out. When you do remove it, uh, you probably want to check the condition of the follower lifter for the high pressure fuel pump. Uh, early on there was a lot of issues with the follower would actually wear out prematurely and destroy the camshaft. So if you have any kind of weird engine noises or a fuel, uh, any kind of fuel performance codes, you might want to check that out. But Basically, like I said, I'm going to take the high pressure fuel pump off, all my electrical connections, then I'm going to remove the valve cover. Um, you don't need to remove the timing cover to do this, uh, you just kind of have to pull it out of the way, but you do have to remove at least the two top bolts. Uh, and the reason for that is I need to get access to the camshafts so I can lock the two cams together uh, so I can time it. Uh, again, I will probably set this thing at top dead center. Uh, I could see that through my inspection cover up here as well as my balancer uh, down below. But basically once this is all timed, valve cover off, all this stuff off, I'm going to then remove the vacuum pump and try to get this cover off. Again, it's a little tricky because on this car it's against the firewall. Um, but it's not too bad. You should be able to do this with basic hand tools. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, let's get to the time lapse so you can see how I remove everything. As you can see, I've got the upper valve cover off. I've got the rear timing cover off. So I now have access to my timing chains, camshafts, everything. Wanted to show you guys real quick what the issue is. You know, I know it's a little hard to see on the camera here, but this is the hydraulic tensioner. The top here, this is a, a plastic guide and there's also a guide here on the bottom. And I don't know if it'll really show in the camera here, but I don't know if you can see that. See the slack in the chain? This is what you hear when you start up the car cold. You're actually hearing this chain slapping around. 
And the reason for it is the tension or the guide here actually breaks eventually. The actuator itself isn't filling up with oil the way it should, either due from uh, poor oil conditions or poor oil quality or, um, you know, even just low oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the chain, the tensioner uh, with new guides. Uh, because they both wear together and uh, that should eliminate that issue um, you know before I go to reinstall everything I'm gonna clean everything up really well here and uh, yeah that's basically it okay real quick I just wanted to show everyone what is what gets damaged on these tensioners and as you can see the broken pieces on either side here this is the new tensioner. This is what it's supposed to look like. So you can imagine with this amount of material missing from both sides, that that chain is now pretty slack. So besides the noise that you're gonna hear, you're also gonna have a little bit of a performance issue because the cam phaser on the back of the camshaft can only rotate and adjust the chain so far. So I'm gonna get everything else cleaned up that I need to reuse and then install my new tensioner new chain and get this thing back together all right guys as you can see I've got the cover all back on got my pump on with a new seal the covers got a new seal um, yeah basically put this thing back together the way I took it apart uh, pretty much why I didn't film it or anything no need for fast forward if you got it apart chances are you can get it back together there are a few things that I wanted to point out on this and unfortunately I didn't take any video but I do have still pictures so hopefully I'll drop them in the video somewhere um, but once I got this back together I had two issues the first was the oil pressure on this thing was dropping and it was dropping as the engine was running generally when you have an issue like that uh, the engine is either a sludged engine or uh, there's debris that's getting clogged up in the pickup screen now. I know when I had the valve cover off that the It looked a little dirty, but it wasn't terrible long story short I ended up having to drop the oil pan and Clean the pickup screen clean the oil pan because there was a lot of the Broken plastic pieces that actually got sucked up into the pickup tube of the oil pump and was restricting the the suction side of the pump therefore not letting enough oil come up and giving me a low oil pressure issue. The second problem I had was inside of the cam phaser on the exhaust camshaft that will advance or retard the intake camshaft. There are three rings that go inside of that phaser. They're made of plastic. Turns out one of my middle ones was broken uh, advanced set point not reached so I'm gonna show you guys what these rings look like real quick and recommend that you buy these rings <laughs> if you're gonna do this job just in case uh, you know they don't really wear out I mean of, of course they're wearing out a little bit but so is the phaser that's going with it um, but you should definitely change them uh, for even that small chance that they break when you take them out or they're already broken and just you know if they fall out that way you have them so let me show you guys what those look like and uh, I'll tell you where you can get them okay so these are the rings see I have two of them because the third one was broken and missing um, but that's them. They're very small as you can see. They're made of plastic so you don't want to stretch these things out. They will break. Uh, you need to treat them like piston rings on a piston. You roll it over um, that adjuster uh, port valve. I'm not sure what you would call it. The part that's going into the cam phaser itself. Um, just be very careful with these and be mindful when you put the cover back on that you don't break these. So I just wanted to show you show you uh, what they look like um, if you look through the internet I'll try to put a link up somewhere uh, there are a couple of kits uh, that I noticed they call them uh, the cam was it a cam chain 
repair kit or something along those lines. Uh, they come with the gasket for the rear cover, they come with these rings, they come with the gasket for the uh, high pressure fuel pump as well as the vacuum pump. And it's not terribly expensive. I mean, for what it is, I'm going to say it was expensive. I think it was about 60 bucks, something like that. Um, but I also know you can order these rings separately from the dealership. Uh, I'll try to put in the description the part number if I can find it again. Um, you know, for these rings, if you just need to get these rings. All right, guys. So that's basically it. It's not terribly difficult to get that cover off. Uh, it's a little tight in some of the spaces. You know, I've got little um, uh, bit driver ratchet wrenches that make it really good to get the T30s off on the cover as well as on the vacuum pump. Uh, the high pressure fuel pump's a little tricky. That does have that triple square uh, on the one line. Uh, the other side is a flare nut, so it's a little easier. But, uh, you know, like I said, if anything's in your way, take the time to take it off. Don't try to work around it. Uh, believe me, you'll spend more time trying to work around it and getting frustrated. Uh, it's easier if you just, if it's in your way, just take it off. So, um, yeah, I, you know, in the description here, uh, I'm going to try to put all the torque specs for everything I need to, to, to do on this, as well as some part numbers, um, just some of the items that, you know, I purchased to do this repair. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, just drop me a comment. I'm pretty good at, you know, trying to answer them as fast as I can. Um, and as informatively as I can. Uh, you know, sometimes some people have given me pretty specific questions, so you know, I need a computer to get onto you know, perhaps ELSA or something like that so I can see exactly you know, specific torque sequences or um, torque specifications. So, as always guys, please like, subscribe, uh, share the videos, and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.